when a post office telegram boy, as they were in those days, stopped and handed me a telegram. I took it indoors excitedly because I thought this was news that Tom would be coming home. I handed the telegram to my mother, which she opened, and she just erupted and went into hysterics because the telegram was to inform that my brother had died on Saturday the 2nd of June. My name is Albert Davy. I'm age 85, soon to be uh, 86, as my brother Thomas Davy, who we knew always as Tom, serving in the Korean War. Um, do you have any like happy memories that you would like to share? Tom, right from a very young age, um, probably when he was eight years, he joined the St. John Ambulance Brigade. And Tom had been a bricklayer, building. Uh, he left school at 14 and he completed his apprenticeship. Uh, when I was at junior school, uh, very small, <laughs> sitting on his on the bar of his cycle sideways and, and take me to take me to school. He was in my hometown of Bridgewater, which was Tom's, of course. They have a carnival. Have you heard the expression carnival? Yeah, and Tom was in a group that uh, took part every year and they would do a comedy sketch he was very popular and um, as i say um, yeah he was always wanting to do good he, he was very good at his craft tom had always we could say served other people in the sense that he spent we saw very little of him at home and so when he was caught up, uh, when he was conscripted, uh, Tom would have accepted that that's what he had to do. And it always surprised me, what was he doing in a regiment where he would be handing, handling a rifle? And I assumed he would have naturally gone into the medical corps, the medical suit. And I'd always assumed this until I met in later years a friend, a good friend of his, and I was discussing this. And he said, no, actually, it was Tom's wish to be in an infantry regiment because he still thought that he would be perhaps in situations where he could like, be a stretcher bearer, that sort of thing in, in a situation. They left San Juan on the uh, 9th of May, 1951, sailing on the U.S. Montrose. Um, on 1st of June, 1951, two platoons of the regiment crossed the uh, Im Jim because five weeks earlier uh, there had been the major battle of the Im Jim 
And the idea was to see what, where the Chinese were on the other side. When, when they were returning to the craft that had taken them across the Imjim, they were badly mortared by the Chinese. Uh, Tom was bad, badly wounded and he was airlifted by helicopter uh, to Amash. As I say, on the Sunday, I'd returned home and heard crying. My mother had been taken to bed. My mother had received a telegram. It was to say that Tom had been wounded in both legs. On the 12th of June, I was sat outside our home in the evening when a post office telegram boy, as they were in those days, stopped and handed me a telegram. I took it indoors excitedly because I thought this was news that Tom would be coming home. I handed the telegram to my mother, which she opened, and she just erupted and went into hysterics because the telegram was to inform that my brother had died on Saturday the 2nd of June. So all the hopes that we had up until the 12th of June were, were literally destroyed. The day after I heard Tom had been wounded, I'd gone to school and looked at the globe to find where Korea was. We didn't know where Tom was. We didn't know where Tom was. It was as though he had just disappeared, literally, off, off the map. When the post office deliver a parcel, it's going to be nice. And I remember mum taking it indoors and opening it up and to discover it was John, Tom's personal belongings, his wallet, his Bible, his... Um... The other thing was that letters that my, a letter that my mother had written to Tom wishing him to get better was literally returned to her in the post And because that's what life is all about. You, you fly the nest, you court, get married, you have family. But for my mother, she couldn't move on. And in our home, um, mum would sit in the window and always seemed to be, when we were calling on her, she always seemed to be in that room looking. And I think because she had no visible signs of, of, John, of Tom leaving us, that she, perhaps one day he'd come walking up the road. <laughs> um, until sadly my mother died and she had kept Tom's possessions, thought that because I'd taken um, such an, a great interest that I should have them. And um, there were two diaries there. Um, and inside one of them uh, was a photo 
of, of this young lady. We never knew Tom had a, had a girlfriend. And her name was Monica, uh, because there's this piece on the back, Tom with best wishes from Monica. But going to South Korea was very consoling for me because what it showed me was that, yes, we'd lost Tom, but the cause that he had died for had not been wasted. A very modern South Korea, uh, so different from the picture that I've been given by the veterans, what, almost, you know, the beautifully maintained cemetery is very consoling, very reassuring. And that um, knowing that uh, your loved one is cared for. And uh, our last question, if you have anything that you want to say or tell Tom, please share. We have missed you very much. I count my blessings for all that you were denied, but that I have enjoyed. <laughs>